Now the life of a digital nomad can be both exciting and unsettling. One of the things that is a non-negotiable, however, is sticking to my training plan and maintaining a good diet. But what exactly does that look like? Well, today we are covering a full day of training and eating as a fitness generalist, Spain edition. Right, double day on this beautiful Saturday morning. I just did a leg session yesterday. We're going out for a little bit of a run and a little bit of a hike, but post my leg session yesterday, I need to roll out in terms of nutrition and fueling, if you can call it nutrition, black coffee only. So again, I still intermittent fast, regardless of any data, whether or not this does or doesn't flip in help, I do not know, but cognitively, it really, really helps me. Energetically, it really, really helps me. So simply a black coffee in the morning. The only other thing that I have had that I haven't shown you is that I've had some electrolyte salts, some uh, some unflavored ones and some water. 10 more minutes, I reckon, of rolling out and getting our shit together. And then we will be out in the beautiful Spanish sunshine. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so golden plan. I reckon between five and 10K. Obviously I am seven weeks in a day post left ankle surgery, but it's feeling a lot better actually. I've been doing a lot of kind of calf and soleus work, tip anterior work in the gym, so everything's feeling a little bit better. I'm not going at a super quick pace. I'm not really bothered about eliciting too much of a training effect from this. A little bit of kind of like aerobic base building but mainly it's just going through the motions of getting me used to running again. Kind of psychologically, I'm not doing any flipping damage to myself. And also just physiologically, just working on that, working on kind of the elasticity of my Achilles and having that strengthened because I haven't really done too much of that or basically any of that. I've been for like two or three runs, shuffles in the last few weeks. It's my uh, new training partners. Here we go, the gateway to the national park a bit of a trail and a bit of a track. The track itself, the slightly kind of flatter ground, we'll be going on that, basically because it's a lot longer and the other one's only a couple of hundred meters. So we'll be taking the right hand path and we'll be heading basically parallel to the beach between five and 10K and hopefully some beautiful scenery and might even get a little bit of a tan. So far so good, no pain in my ankle or Achilles, which is very rare. I'm going to be able to do this in this unbelievably beautiful environment. Not a bad life to be living in, right? We are halfway done. We have run to the end of the fucking world. We are in one of the most beautiful places in Spain. However, I've done the path. My ankle's actually feeling pretty good. So it makes sense that whilst we've got the terrain, let's go a little bit off-road. Right, that is the run slash shuffle done. I reckon that's probably about 7K total in the bag. In this beautiful scenery, it'll be absolutely flipping moronic to not take advantage of the sea. So I think a post-run dip is necessary. <laughs> Benny boy, how you feeling? Top of the world, baby. Top of the world.
run, slash shuffle done, dip in the sea done, time for some refuel. So I'm breaking my fast, it's later than normal, it's 1.40. However, some days I have, uh, I'd probably say four or five days a week, I have a fairly low carb kind of breakfast, lunch break my fast. Um, around about kind of 1 p.m. it's fairly low carb. However, because this is a double session day, today we're gonna have some white rice and some peppers, so we're spooning a hashtag shit ton of that in. Benny boy, how much do we love this rice cooker? This rice cooker is a game changer. Mate, this is life. Like this has been, like if there's only one thing we we're gonna fucking bring to Spain with us, it's gonna be this. So rice and peppers, uh, a shitload of beef as I do enjoy a certain amount of red meat. However, one of the things that I've introduced to this recently is the fact that I'm now having dairy with my beef. And the reason for that, Benny boy, correct me if I'm wrong, but for men who eat a lot of red meat, they can have iron levels that are too high and the calcium in the dairy slightly slows or prevents some of the uptake of the iron so you don't end up with too much iron. According to our mate Stan, indeed. According to Stan Epiding, or as I call him, Stan, or Sir, because he's fucking enormous. So this, little bit of Greek yogurt, might throw in a raw carrot as well, hashtag vertical diet. And uh, absolutely some salsa brava for any of those, for any of you. Oh, 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 you knew that was coming, didn't you? That was prep, that wasn't, that wasn't even rehearsed. The number of fucking bottles of this stuff that we go through is absurd. Like we are genuinely stimulating the economy of our local town just with this product. It's like crack. It's basically like crack, it's exactly, right. it's yeah. Like crack. It's a slippery slope, <laughs> the red crack. Salsa brava, guys, it's a slippery slope to heroin. Yo, so it is now the afternoon. The only thing that I've consumed that you have not seen me consume is my second cup of coffee of the day. However, it's now 4.30 p.m. We're about to head to a nearby village to meet some friends and right next to said friend's house, there is a flipping amazing gym where we are gonna complete our second session of the day, which is gonna be the upper body session. However, before that, let's keep our protein intake high. I basically, because I am having a little bit more dairy than normal, I actually bought some vegan protein recently, some rice and grass and pea based stuff. Peanut choco caramel flavor. So one and a half scoops. No one got big having one scoop a day. That's all I'm saying. So one and a tad. It's about a 45 minute drive. So it's gonna be about an hour before we actually start training in the world's most masculine shaker. I'm gonna have a portion of this and the supplements that I'm gonna have. I covered this in a video recently, or one of them, which is this boron, 10 milligrams of boron and also P5P, which is like a uh, B vitamin complex. So one each of these tastes good. The only downside with this, and this is my experience with most vegan proteins, is that as soon as you mix it with water, it basically becomes fucking concrete, <laughs> very hard to drink. So I might need to add a little bit of extra fluid to that, but this and a banana, P5P and boron. Let's get on the road for session number two. Ben forgot something. That is why he's going back. I wonder what he's forgotten. Guesses down in the comment section below. Did you get what you were looking for, Benny boy? I did. And what was that? Nicky G. Nicky G, nicotine gum. However many of you suggested that. Be honest. It's amazing, I feel like moderately elastic, like I'm able to move without pain. You've got that nice curve to take some of the impact off that. Yeah, exactly, a little bit higher. Of yours. It's feeling good. A few little mobility bits, I'm still kind of warm from earlier. And some pump. Get rid of these little threads. This is such a good gym. Introduced to us, introduced to us through our lovely local tour guide, Sarai, everyone. Welcome to the Woohoo! <laughs> our tour guide and translator and chef, and basically overall, and hostess with the mostess. So beginning of the session, as we always do after the warm up, section one is the primer. We're basically gonna do a from full kneeling position leaning forward, explosive throw, down into a press up. And as we've got a three time Olympian here, it'd be stupid not to fucking use him, wouldn't it? Let's go. Okay, so moving into the main compound, we're gonna do a little push pull or actually pull push. 
supersets, so I'm going to do rope climbs, health and safety, slightly more fucking liberal in Spain because you don't really get ropes that high in England. That's high, right? It is. <laughs> <laughs> no one's blinking looking up at it thinking, Jesus Christ. So, one length up, but legless, all the way down exactly the same, and then into five push press, but, well, sorry, five strict press on the bar, little bit of a break, and then we'll go again, probably three rounds of that only. It's a very short and sharp session. But the reason I'm doing the pull work, I've said this a couple of times on this channel recently, doing some pull work before you go into the push just activates the lats or the muscles of the back of the shoulder and it basically gets the shoulder girl into a nice solid position so that any push movement, even vertical or horizontal, is a the shoulder is basically a little bit more stable in the socket. That's the theory anyway. And it means I'm going to be a little bit fresher when I go into the rope, which is definitely going to be the hardest bit. So quick sip of water, and then it's around one. Jimmy, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, I'll be honest. I'm not nervous thinking I can't do it. I'm, I feel apprehensive because I know it's going to hurt, but I will keep myself accountable. I'll climb up to the top of fucking Everest and down legless. Let's go, fist bump from Benny boy. Boom, it's the power needed. I'll take it. Round one done. Definitely need a couple of minutes break after that. As with any flipping rope climb, the way up is actually kind of okay but then the way down, A, it requires more control and B, you're already fucked from getting up there. So that bit just feels a little bit kind of sketchy, but two minutes should be enough, then it's around two. Uh, eight reps done in the last round. Three of those is heavier than I've gone in a while, especially with the fact that there's it's like maximal central nervous system activation on the rope. Because you're fucking scared of falling down, that third one is a bit sketchy. But happy with that, done short and sharp. Obviously that's vertical push and vertical pull. Now moving on to some horizontal work before we finish with some guns. Incline bench. I don't really use kind of machines like this, but I just feel like it because I'm in a gym that has this particular bit of kit and all the equipment here is flipping amazing. So I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do some seated rows. So a little bit more horizontal push and pull. I'm gonna do probably around about uh, 12 of each. I've moved it down, I actually did about a month where I was doing 20s of everything just to round out my games, I never did it. So 12 of these, 12 of seated row, three rounds through, pretty much no recovery. Let's get cracking. Bigger. Mine. I don't know, it's close. Who's, bro. who's got bigger arms? It's close. Who's got bigger pecs? Set three, round three done. Flipping it, man. We're about three quarters of the way through the session now. A little bit of a finisher, slightly lower intensity, bit of biceps, triceps, and core work. My kind of standard little go-to beasting at the end of an upper body session, but again, I feel good, man. So I'm gonna use it.
tick. That is the session done. Jesus, I felt good. I do still feel good, but I can tell I've flipping tapped into a level of intensity that I just haven't for the last probably couple of months. This might be the best session I've had since I've been in Spain, which is bloody great. This is the day that I chose to showcase and document this fucking stuff for you guys. So rehydrate, back home, and then proper recovery. <sighs> and hello squad, it is now in fact the next day. So apologies, I didn't get the opportunity to show you what I have for dinner, but I'll walk you through it. I basically had a whole grilled chicken, some patatas bravas, and a little side salad as well. So good quality protein, quite a low fat, lean protein though. Potatoes for some carbs and getting my greens in as well. The reason I couldn't showcase that, I went out with some friends and the evening kind of spiraled from there in true Spanish style and dinner went on till about 11.30 p.m. But I suppose looking at it through the lens of opportunity in a very kind of real authentic way, it can kind of be a good example that you don't need to be overly neurotic with counting calories and with being too prescriptive with what you're doing food wise, especially on days that you're super active and you're doing two flipping sessions, making sure that you get the fuel in so you've got the calories to truly drive home that adaptation that you want, especially if it's performance based. If it's physique based and you're trying to maintain a certain body composition, then obviously it's a little bit different but if like me you are a globally enthusiastic fitness generalist physique is obviously very important but performance and continuing to embrace the love of training is the primary objective then there's nothing wrong with just going out having dinner and flipping enjoying yourself Guys, that's a full day of training and eating, digital nomad style Spain edition. If you did enjoy this video, please do smash that like button. Any questions on anything we've covered at all, please put it down in the comment section below. If you have not yet done so, make sure you subscribe. Any requests or suggestions on anything else for the future that you'd like me to cover, put that down in the comment section below. And as always, beautiful people, stay strong, stay healthy, stay awesome. And I'll see you all in the next video.